Okay, this is Anthony Karam giving my descriptive analysis of the Wesley Gary magnetic motor that he invented in the 1800s and how I believe it functioned. Well, if you look in figure one, you'll see a dotted line, which is the neutral line, and then you'll see a north-south pole. And that north-south pole are the two ends of a horseshoe magnet. Because uh, this Wesley Gary was experimenting with horseshoe magnets a lot back then. So if you take this uh, ends of a horseshoe magnet or take a horseshoe magnet and lay it on a table flat where the north-south pole are on the same plane as it's shown here in figure one and if you do a line under the north-south poles in figure one that line would be the table okay and then the horseshoe magnet would be laying there with the pole pieces facing you now remove the table that now you have the magnet suspended in midair on a horizontal plane let's go to figure two figure two shows a box in the dotted line that box in the dotted line is a piece of metal a metal strip that's all it is and the metal could be tin or iron what have you of a thin piece not too thick but I'd say about it maybe an eighth inch thick now if you took that metal and put it on that dotted line Mr. Gary claims there's a neutral line in that area. Now, let's go to figure three. If you raise that metal, now that piece of metal now, in that neutral line in figure two, let's get back to that again. That, it's not going to show any field on it. It'll be depolarized. But it's still attracted to the magnet. But at that point, it won't show any field in it whatsoever. It's a neutral line, neutral zone. Well, if you move that metal piece that's perpendicular to the north-south poles of the horseshoe magnet and move it above the neutral line, Mr. Gary claims you'll now show the metal is magnetized with the South Pole and the North Pole, how it's shown here in Figure 3, which is opposite to the pole pieces of the horseshoe magnets below it. What's interesting is if you go to Figure 4 and you lower that metal pole piece metallic metal magnetized metal the field changes and now it's the same field as the horseshoe magnet is now that's how it works and he was claiming all he had to move that pole piece was a fifteenth of an inch that's like something like a 330 seconds. That's it to get a complete change in magnetic flux. Furthermore, he was winding wires around the pole piece because if there's a change in field, there's a change in field, a current is induced into the magnet wire. And he was able to get energy out by reciprocating up and down the pole piece 
and moving it ever so slightly somewhere around 15th of an inch at a high frequency of reciprocation. He also noticed that he got more energy out than what he put in and claimed over unity. Now I'm on a quest to find out where that machine is. I've been told about 10 years ago it was hidden somewhere in a museum. And I'm looking for it. If anybody knows where it's at or has seen it, let me know so I can drive to that state to take a look at it. I don't want to spend my whole life trying to build it because I'm preoccupied with other things. I'd like to go look at it and reduplicate what's already been invented by this Wesley Geary and give whatever proceeds to his family. That's the goal. And the rest of it, give it to the world. I think he's on to something, and I think this works. I've had, I have a, I've had a lot of experience in magnetics and magnetic embodiments. This movement, I feel, is self-sustaining. And this, we need to focus on. That's the end.